readings and homily for the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Love is always patient and kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense and is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth. It's always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Love does not come to an end. But if there are gifts of prophecy, the time will come when they must fail, or the gift of languages, it will not continue forever. And knowledge, for this too, the time will come when it must fail. For our knowledge is imperfect and our prophesying is imperfect. But once perfection comes, all imperfect things will disappear. When I was a child, I used to talk like a child and think like a child and argue like a child. But now I am a man. All childish waves are put behind me. Now we are seeing a dim reflection in a mirror, but then we shall be seeing face to face. The knowledge that I have now is imperfect, but when I, but then I shall know as fully as I am known. In short, there are three things that last, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. The Gospel of the Lord. Saint Philip Neri, that's a, a Roman saint, he recounts the following story. A man openly admitted to his wife that he needed to go to confession because of the unpleasant things he was saying about his nephews and nieces and other relatives. He was a humble man, however. For his penance, to his surprise, St. Philip had told him to go to the local market, buy a hen, and on his way back home, pluck the hen feather by feather, and then retrace his steps to collect all the feathers. But that's impossible, said the man. By now the wind will have blown them all over the place. Exactly, said the priest. It's the same with your defamatory talk. You don't know where your words have ended up by now. Now that gave the man a bit of a jolt. When your foot slips, you can recover your balance, but when your tongue slips, you can never recall your words. Speaking without thinking is like shooting without aiming. People who use social media or even email often have regrets later about something that they wrote. They wished they had never pressed the send button, and that certainly happened to me. I don't know about you. St. Paul tells us today that love takes no pleasure in other people's sins. We can only take pleasure, I think, in other people's sins if we are envious of them in the first place, or we have something in for them. It appears to me from today's Gospel that the people of Nazareth were in this sorry frame of mind when Jesus paid them a surprise visit. Even though initially he was welcomed, it was short-lived when Jesus told them a few home truths about themselves. Despite him being one of their own, he did not share their small-minded tribal approach towards outsiders. This attitude is alien to the gospel mandate to love our neighbor, and it applies to all of us. The root of the people's problem at Nazareth seemed to be rather simple. He seemed to have more time for the people of Capernaum, 30 miles away, than for them. News travels fast now, doesn't it? Jesus takes them down a further peg or two in telling them that at the time of Elijah, God chose to heal the Syrian Naaman of leprosy, 
even though he hadn't a drop of Jewish blood in his veins. This didn't seem to go down well with them at all. Their weariness boils over into anger, nearly leading to his murder. Scurrilous talk, however, may not end in cold-blooded murder, but it could tear to shreds a person's character. God has given most people the gift of speech, but our tongue can be used for good or ill. Like Jesus, it can sometimes get us into trouble, but oftentimes it will be the right kind of trouble when we suffer for speaking up for the truth as he did. Silence is not always golden. However, in upholding the truth, we must guard against staining a person's good name. Unlike river water, gossip flows both ways. The person who gossips to you is almost certain to gossip about you. Unguarded talk about others is a sin against the Eighth Commandment. And if we're honest with ourselves, none of us can claim exemption from it. Lent, which is fast approaching, is a good time to face up to this sin. Jesus takes no pleasure in anyone's sins like we do at times. On the contrary, there's joy in heaven when a sinner repents. Now let's not let that joy go a-begging. Thank you all very much for listening today and God bless you all.